What's up guys, it's Zach over here at AFS. On today's episode of How To, I'm gonna teach you guys how to tint the taillights on this BMW M3. Let's get into it. All right, so first step, as with all of our installs, we need to use an alcohol prep spray to wipe down the taillight and surrounding areas so we make sure we don't get any dirt in our install. So once we've wiped the surface of the light as well as the surrounding areas, we wanna take our squeegee or any thin card you might have and we're gonna put it inside the rag and we're actually going to go around the light here to make sure that we don't have any dirt around the edges. So our edges will stick because the edges are the most important part to make sure that you install a lasting product here. So now that we have our light prepped, we need to take a measuring tape and measure how much film we need to cut for this. You do wanna cut a couple inches extra on both directions so you can stretch the film and not cut yourself short. So even though this is a two piece light, we are going to go ahead and stick it as one. So it's just about 24 inches wide by seven. So we're probably gonna cut about 27 inches by 10 inches. So we have about three inches of extra in either direction. So for today's install, we're going to be using Hexus Hex Light film. Uh, we really like to use this film. It's a cast product, um, but the way this film stretches is very, very nice, and it makes install much easier than the old school calendared film that is, you know, pretty difficult to use, and you have to wet install because it does not have air egress. This does have air egress, so I would definitely recommend checking out Hex Light or Lux Light Wrap. So as with all of our installs, the last step prior to actually installing the film is going to be taking our tack cloth and wiping the surface down to make sure we get any loose dust that may be sitting on the light or surrounding area. So on this, because this side has a little bit more curvature than the inside, we're going to start on the inside of the light and stretch around to the outside of this. So we're gonna create a tack point on the inside there. So now that we have the inside of the light tacked, we're gonna go ahead and stretch it around. Uh, this part is definitely easier with a buddy to help pull out the horizontal fingers that we will create by stretching it around. So he's gonna pull those fingers out while I pull it around. You can do it by yourself, but you will have to go back and pull the horizontal fingers out after the fact, which does make it a little bit more difficult. So as you can see, as I'm pulling, he just glasses the film out as I'm rounding the corner there. And then right here on the end, I'm gonna put some outward stretch on it so it shrinks back nicely. Now just this little imperfection here, I'm just gonna go back, pick that up, pull that out. And as you can see, the light is wrapped around. Right here, we're gonna put a little bit of stretch on this corner as well. And now we are going to start at the middle of the light, work our way around and out. And again, this film does have air egress, so it is a dry install and you can card all of the bubbles out without fighting to get any moisture out or any bubbles left behind. So when you get a bubble right here, there's a little indention in the light. Um, you can sit there and try to push it out um, and just keep pushing it, which uh, is actually gonna work here. So I'm just gonna push that out. There is a little crease right here from the bubble that was created. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that back up lay it down, and we're going to apply a little bit of heat to that. So if you guys don't have access to a propane torch, um, I would definitely recommend a heat gun. That's probably the safest tool to use. It's much more controllable heat and it's not as hot as fast. So for beginners, it's definitely the better way to go opposed to a torch. but. When you do it day in and day out, uh, torches are the way to go because it does provide heat a lot quicker and you're not tethered by a cord. But if you're doing this by yourself in the garage, definitely recommend a heat gun. Some people may try to use a hair dryer, but I don't recommend it. It's a lot of air movement and not quite as hot as a heat gun, so it's a little bit harder to control. 
So now that we have the taillight carded, we wanna go around and make sure all of our edges are pushed down. So for example, in this area, you can see how the film is protruding a little bit. Um, that's because it's bridged to the quarter panel a little bit more than this area or this area. So we wanna go ahead and pick that up and completely remove it from tacking on the quarter panel and then push it in just a little bit to get around our edge. And you can see there, it is no longer bridged to the quarter. So it will give us a much cleaner cut as you go around um, when it's bridged to your quarter panel, you will get a wave in the cut. So you definitely wanna to try to keep it as uniform as possible around your edge prior to cutting to get the cleanest finish work possible. So as I'm going around the edges here on this tail light, I'm using wrap glove. This is a Paint is Dead Pro Glove HD. It is our go-to choice for wrap gloves here. We are a certified Paint is Dead shop. So the way they support us, we try to support them and they also provide the best gloves on the market for installing. Using this glove gives you a little bit of extra tactile feedback as you go around, make sure you don't have any dirt, any creases, anything like that around the edge. Uh, it's much easier to feel with your hand than it is a glove, but the glove allows your hand to slide much, much easier on this, opposed to no glove where your fingers will start to grip on the film. So I've gone around the light, I've made sure all of our edges are pushed down, and it is time for trim. So we're gonna take our NT Cutter Red Dot. Again, this is what we use in all of our videos. This is our go-to blade in the shop. This is my personal favorite because of the half click so you can get a little bit more controllable blade amount on the outside, uh, which is super good for a situation like this because we're going to cut in the dead space between the light and the quarter panel. So if you have too much blade out, you will end up hitting the quarter panel on the inside behind the tail light, which is something we do not wanna do. So we're gonna take just a little bit of blade, probably about one to two clicks. So as we go around and trim this tail light, you have to pay attention to the fitment of the tail light to the quarter panel. Um, when there's a large gap, we're going to cut on the uh, quarter panel edge so we have about an eighth inch of film that will wrap around areas where it's very tight we're just going to put our knife and follow the back edge of our tail light to give us just enough film to wrap around the edge so as we go you can see this gap is tighter than this gap so we're going to kind of change the cut as we go around if you want to keep it simple and the edge unwrapped you can edge cut this light all the way around but we want to try to get as much coverage as possible so because it's two piece um, i am going to start on this outside one it's just preference so I'm, as i cut i'm following the quarter panel edge here now obviously you don't want to cut into the quarter panel you're just going to cut around you're going to use your blade to follow as you go now for this one this gap is a little tighter so this is Kind of where uh, I mentioned we're going to try to follow the back edge of the light here. You obviously, you don't want to push too hard because you will damage the paint on the vehicle. But right now, I'm just cutting along the back edge. Now for the gap on the lights here, um, I'm going to do what we call 50-50, which is just centering the blade in the gap so that each side has equal coverage. Go ahead and pull off the excess here. So as you go around, now that we've cut, uh, you wanna take your wrap glove and actually use your finger to slightly roll the edge on all of the corners prior to heating, because if you have any tension in uh, edges that you don't want it, and you heat it before you round the edge, uh, it will snap back on the face of the light and it does make it very difficult to fix. So if it was stretched properly, you shouldn't have any tension in the wrong place, um, but it's still a very good habit to take this and go and wrap around before you heat anything up. Now that we've pushed all the edges down, we're gonna take our torch, go ahead, heat all of our edges, relax all the film before our final push around the edge for our finish work.
All right guys, so now that we have the tail light finished up here, you can see the difference between the factory red and the tinted red. Again, we did use hex light, light tint on this tail light. Hexus does offer other shades. If you want a darker or lighter product, a lot of people really like that black tail light look. So you're gonna wanna go with the dark film for that one. So this is kind of a generic video on how to tint lights in general. Um, there's so many headlights and tail lights on vehicles that it is hard to make a video for every single instance. The lights aren't very complex on this vehicle and they are two piece with one on the quarter panel, one on the trunk. Some vehicles only have one piece in the quarter panel or the trunk. So if you guys need any specific help on your vehicle and that you're struggling with, please reach out to us at AFS and we'd be happy to help you guys with any tips and tricks we might have to help you get through those lights. That's gonna do it for today's how to guys. Please go check out our other how-tos and insight videos where we go in depth on wraps and builds and the customers behind them. Don't forget to follow us on our socials, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at AFS. Drop a comment, like, and subscribe on YouTube and stay tuned for our next how-to and insight video.